Hi guys, in this video we'll look at the inverse function machine, inverse functions, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So how can we use function machines to understand more about inverses? Sometimes we perform an action, and we want to know how to perform the reverse of this action. Let's say we had the action multiply by 2. The reverse of this action is to divide by 2. When these actions are functions, performing the opposite action is called the inverse function. Let's say we had x being mapped to y by the function f then the function which sends y back to x would be called the inverse function. This is best described with function machines. Again, let's say we had x going in to the f machine. Out comes f of x. Again, let's suppose we send in f of x into the f inverse machine what we hope to get out is x again. We'd like to develop a method to find the inverse of a function algebraically. So how can we deal with inverse functions? We can determine the inverse function by swapping x and y. So let's say we had first y equals 3x minus 2. Now notice here we're not dealing with f or g of x. So the first step would be to put a y in place of that function. Then we swap the x and the y to get x equals 3y minus 2. We then solve for y to get the inverse function. In this case we put the 3y on the left hand side and we add 2 to both sides to get x plus 2 and then we divide by 3 to get y equals x plus 2 over 3. We then come back into functions and we have f inverse of x is x plus 2 over 3. Now the inverse function swaps the domain and range of the original function. Let's say we had f going from domain a to range b taking in a and spitting out f of a then f inverse would go from b to a would take in b and would spit out f inverse of b. Now the inverse of a function doesn't always exist. The original function must be one to one for the inverse to exist. Remember that this kind of function is a one to one function this is to say that for every y you pick, there is exactly one x value that it corresponds to. And similarly, this kind of function is a many to one function. There are certain values of y for which if you pick them, you get at least two values of x. Now the reason that being many to one is a problem is that the inverse will be one to many. This is not a function by definition. Again, the definition of a function is that a function is a mapping from the domain to the range such that for every x in the domain, there is a unique y in the range such that y equals f of x. In this case, it would not be unique and hence the inverse would not be a function at all. Now, inverse functions have to obey a particular composition. This is to say that when you apply f to the inverse function f inverse and apply this to x, you get the same thing as when you apply f inverse to f and this is applied to x and the result in either case is x. Let's say we had f of x equals 3x minus 2. And again, we have f inverse of x 
equals x plus 2 over 3. Then f of f inverse of x is f of x plus 2 over 3 by definition of f inverse, which is 3 lots of x plus 2 over 3 and then minus 2 by the definition of f. This, of course, is x plus 2 minus 2, which is x, as we expected. And again, let's say we take f inverse, applied to f, and then applied to x. This would be the same as f inverse of 3x minus 2, by definition of f. In this case, this is 3x minus 2, our input, and then plus 2, and then divided by 3, by the definition of f inverse. This, of course, is 3x over 3, which is x. Now, some functions are self-inverse. Let's say we had the function of x, 1 minus x. Now, if we have a look at f of f of x, we get f of 1 minus x by definition of f of x, and then we get 1 minus 1 minus x, again, by the definition of f of x. This is 1 minus 1 plus x by expanding the minus, and of course, this is x. Therefore, we can deduce that the inverse function must be also 1 minus x, since it obeys the composition we described above. f of f inverse is x, and f inverse of f is also x. Now, if the inverse function exists, we can graph it without first determining it algebraically. Let's say we had as our function of f this function here. We can then draw on the line y equals x, and then by the composition above, it must be the case that f inverse is just a reflection of f of x in the line y equals x. So given f of x, we are able to sketch f inverse of x. Again, this is because we can reflect it in the line y equals x. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to find algebraically the inverse of f of x equals 5x plus 2, all cubed. Our first step is to put y in place of f of x. This gives us y equals 5x plus 2, all cubed. Our second step is to swap x and y. We get x equals 5y plus 2, all cubed. Our third step is to solve for y. By cube rooting both sides and applying index rules, we get x to the power of 1 third equals 5y plus 2. By subtracting, we get x to the power of 1 third minus 2 equals 5y. Then, of course, y equals x to the power of 1 third minus 2 over 5. Our fourth step is to put back f inverse of x in place of y. Therefore, we get f inverse of x equals x to the power of 1 third minus 2 over 5. And that is our inverse function. Our second example asks us to verify that f of x is self-inverse, where f of x equals 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x. Our first step is to recall the condition for being self-inverse. Remember that a function is self-inverse if f of f of x is the same as x. Therefore, our second step is to consider f of f of x. So again, f of f of x. Now, by definition of f of x, this is the same as f of 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x. And again, by definition of f, this is the same as 1 minus 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x divided by 1 plus 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x. 
Our third step is to simplify. Again, we have 1 minus 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x, and this is divided by 1 plus 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x. If we multiply by 1 plus x, both top and bottom, we get a 1 plus x here. The 1 plus x cancels with the fraction to give just 1 minus x, the numerator, and this is divided by 1 plus x plus 1 minus x. This, of course, is 2x divided by 2, which is x. Our last step is to state the conclusion. The conclusion is, since f of f of x is x, we must have that f of x is self-inverse. Our third example asks us to sketch the graph of the inverse of f of x equals x cubed plus 5x minus 6. Our first step is to find the zeros of f of x. By using the factor theorem, we have f of 1 equals 1 cubed plus 5 lots of 1 minus 6. This is 1 plus 5 minus 6, which is 0. Therefore, x minus 1 is a factor of f of x. And therefore, we can divide this off or use inspection and we get that f of x equals x minus 1 multiplied. And again, we can use inspection here or polynomial long division to divide off the x minus 1 from the original f of x. And we get x squared plus x plus 6. Now again, we're looking for zeros of f of x. We can see that we have one zero at x equals one. But do we have any more zeros from this quadratic? Taking a look at the discriminant of this quadratic, we end up getting minus 23, and this is less than zero. Therefore, this quadratic has no real roots, and x equals one is the only real root of f of x. Our second step, therefore, is to sketch f of x. We have the x and y intercepts. Clearly, the y intercept is minus 6. And also, the x intercept is 1. Therefore, the function comes along and does something like this. Our third step is to plot the line y equals x on this sketch. When we come along and plot the line y equals x, we get something like the following. Again, this is the line y equals x. Our fourth step is to mirror f of x in the line y equals x. This will give us our inverse function. When we do the mirroring, we get something that looks like the following. And therefore, this is the sketch of f inverse of x. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap and smiley face and together let's make A-Level Maths a walk in the park.